So would I hire you as my company president? Or maybe there's my old office out in front of my awful office, my bookkeeper. Oops, would I? Well, do you know your numbers? Do you know what I just shared with you? Do you already know what you should make? Well, a good controller, bookkeeper, financial manager, accounting manager, you should know those numbers. They shouldn't have to call me to find out. They should know. They should be actively engaged in the industry and follow the surveys. If you're in NUCA, National Utility Contracts, they have a survey. The plumbers have a survey. They're no contract. AGC has surveys. I just showed it to you. So think about what you need to know. So here's how it works. For some of you may or may not know this. Most of you probably know this. So uh, uh, as your volume goes up, your overhead goes up in chunks. Every time you hire somebody, it goes up. So your overhead's going to be too low, and then it's going to be too high, and then it's going to be too low. But over time, you're going to grow, and you're going to make more money. And eventually, it'll straighten out. And so the bigger the contractor, the lower the overhead. So here's what happens. As your revenue grows, your overhead goes down. Therefore, your markup goes down because that 5% net profit is going to stay relatively the same. And then your net profit should stay the same. As you get bigger, your, your net should stay about the same. But your overhead is going to go down, which means your markup. So if you're a $10 million contractor, your overhead's probably, I don't know, 10%, let's say. And your markup's another five. So you have 15. If you bid against the $50 million contractor, their overhead's probably six. Your markup's five. So they're going to bid at 11. You're bidding at 15. You're never going to get any work against a bigger contractor. So I get a lot of guys, you know, doing a whole bunch of half million dollar jobs and they want to build a bit of $5 million job. We well, can't use the same markup or you'll never get it because you're bidding against bigger contractors who have a lower overhead. So I love to get bid against uh, smaller contractors. I beat them every time. I don't like to bid against bigger contractors because their overhead and markup is much lower than me. And you say, well, what about the subs? Well, the same thing with the subs, the bigger subs have less markup. The small subs have a real high markup, like 20 or 30%. The small electricians, the, excuse me, the big electricians are only marking it up maybe 20. And I got to mark up 30, just cover my overhead as a small electrician. So make sure you clearly understand that uh, accounting team and uh, owners and managers. Okay, so uh, as your volume grows, your markup shrinks. Okay, in Southern California, I can hire a five to $10 million general contractor all day for under 5% total overhead and profit markup. Now at a million dollars, I'm probably gonna be around 10. But at 50, uh, 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 if a bigger contractor on a million dollar job is gonna be like eight. And a, and a $10 million contractor is gonna be like 12. So who's gonna get the job? The bigger contractor. So think about how you pick jobs. Bigger is cheaper. Just remember that. Bigger is cheaper. Guys call me all the time. I got a $5 million job to bid. Well, the last biggest one you did was a million. What's your markup? I'm going to use 12. You're never going to get it. Need to be at six. Six? No way. Well, just count it as, as uh, double it. Just count it as double the, double the sales with half the markup, right? That's basically what you're thinking about, right? Okay. So the key point, winning markup strategy. A uh, small job, big company. Cost is 90000 A big company, let's say it costs a little more. It shouldn't, but let's say it does. Your overhead's five, six, seven. It's going to be lower. So your profit, the big company's going to charge more because they know they're bidding against the small guy. So guess what? The big company's going to be cheaper. And probably that 5% overhead is a little light. Maybe it should be eight. But you can see the big company's going to be they're going to take advantage of bid against smaller contractors. And on the bigger, the bigger job, small company, big job, say it costs 900 grand, the big company is going to be 850 because their subs are going to be cheaper and their overhead is going to be much less and their profit's the same. But guess what? Big company is going to get it every time by a bunch of money. So be careful when you do bigger jobs. I want to grow a bigger job. That's fine, but your markup's going to go down, which means you got to do more work to cover the same overhead. Okay, so 
Uh, down at the bottom of that page 11, uh, number one, what do you want? It's all about what you want. How much money do you want to make? What kind of customers do you want to go after? What net profit? Do you want to be low end or high end? You want to do commodity work or difficult work? Commodity work is schools that everybody and their brother can bid, whether you speak English or, or uh, whatever. It doesn't matter. Whether you can add, it doesn't matter. Just you got to have a bond. Anybody can bid that stuff. And so you're, there's no separation or sieve that, that qualify the, the, the bidders. Anybody can bid it. So if we get on pre-qualified, select three people, three company bid lists, it's much better. When we want a written plan to achieve our goals, which we're working on today. Then we want to always track and make progress. Okay. Real simple. Rules for rich contractors. These are just kind of George's rules. What's the best investment? Is it a bunch of equipment sitting in your yard? Is that a good investment? Nah, I don't think so. Is it a new pickup truck? Or is it a professional accounting manager with fully integrated software? Well, you know the answer, right? Uh, so I want a professional, fully trained accounting manager, full charge bookkeeper, who understands GAP. Well, if you don't know what it is, you better learn it. I'm not going to tell you what it is. CFMA, certified. They need to know about insurance, bonding, banking, HR, and fully integrated software. Huh? And what's the best? People call me, what's the best software? Well, shouldn't your bookkeeper know? Well, they don't know. Well, I can tell you, but why don't they know? I'll look at it. They're professional construction accounting people. They should know the choices and what's the best. So rule number one, hire a pro if you want to grow and make a profit. You need a good, in, that doesn't mean a good CPA. You need a good CPA, but a pro to be on your employment to do your accounting. And maybe you need a coach like me, or maybe you need a good attorney, or maybe you need a good safety manager, or maybe you need a strategic planning facilitator or an attorney. Number two, always follow the contract. Check it out. What does it say about markup? What does it say about notice? In my contract, it says, if you don't give me notice within seven days, 10 days, the change order is free. If you don't bill me, I'm not going to pay you your retention. If you don't, if you don't do your as builts and turn in your uh, closeout documents, you're not going to get your retention until you do that. So my contract's pretty clear what I want. Subcontract, general contract. Software. You've got to have good software. It's just as important as a project manager, but you're some people are too cheap to, to invest in a software that costs 20 grand. It that's what it costs. Get over it. Get into the 90s, man. Let's get let's get going here. Now, I'm not saying you need everything, but it's got to be integrated. Um, and rule number four, don't borrow based on your future ability to pay. Well, when I get more work, I can use this tractor. No, get to work, then figure it out. Don't borrow because we all know what happens if there's no work. What do I do with all this stuff? Well, it sits in your yards and rusts. And number five, buy your first rental property before your second truck. That's the most important. It should be number one. Don't buy a truck. Buy a rental property with your next 30 grand down. Go buy a duplex and rent it out. And 10 years from now, you'll have beautiful cash flow and you've created another 150 grand in net worth versus the truck, which is worth zero after five or 10 years, right? Okay, let's keep going. Let's go to 12. Page 12, let's get into some numbers now. Let's get into some numbers, and I'll show you where you can find them on the uh, template in a minute. Rules for rich. Okay, before your second truck, right. Okay, forgot that.